thanks to that, um, I went into snowboarding. Um, so I, I was uh, coding little projects in the afternoon, writing in the morning, um, because it was fun. Uh, I'll repeat what I said in Spanish, but for me, plan B distracts from plan A. And that's not my lemma. I think that's Will Smith on some funny video on YouTube. Um, but I listened that that sentence um, like uh, lots of years ago, and, and it it went deep in myself. So basically, um, I was snowboarding, and I had a little comp little businesses a website with Stripe um, that allowed me to 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 you know to live the dream and keep snowboarding, traveling around the world. Um, till eventually, had two little um, little 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 companies that were bothering me because, you know, um, one sunny day that I could be doing snowboarding, um, I was just sending invoices and talking to my accountant and, you know, and this is missing, the paperwork is missing, etc. So I was in Austria, in a, it was a snowing for three weeks, so I couldn't write, I couldn't do anything. So I was like, okay, let's, let's try to solve it, right? Um, I was a digital nomad at that time, good old days. Um, so I built all that as a, just for myself. Um, it was a, a simple invoicing tool just to, create uh, invoices and just have them in a nice website so my accountant could log in and so he didn't have to call me every two days and ask me for paperwork um so it was uh you know pain solver you know i could forget about my companies and, and keep snowboarding um then i posted on facebook saying like you know maybe um it's gonna be a few more nomads like me that you know that they would want to use it um i think it was like a zero full free forever free you know a little bit of a lie um but it was it was fun little project that never intended to make money then I met my partner and we say, hey, what if what if we go all in uh, on this, right? Uh, so we met in Barcelona. And then because I said plan B distracts from plan A, eventually hold it started to, well, it became the plan A. So I quit snowboarding. So I quit being a digital nomad um, just to go full in at hold it. I'm talking around 2017, like six years ago now. Um, where remote was not a was not a big thing. At least if you want to build a project, um, you know there were uh, you know bootcamp. There was a, a few companies having like a full uh, remote culture. It was hard. People would be like you know either you're a freelance and you know you work for yourself, but it was hard to hire people on remote. And we didn't even think about it. So we got the little office in Barcelona, and then we start we tried to raise money. Super complicated. We got it in the end. And then fast forward. Um, we raised, well, fast forward, we raised a little bit of money and then COVID exploded. That was around 2020. Uh, COVID exploded. We were in London trying to raise 6 million euros. Um, everybody shut the offices down. Um, so we were there and we we're like, yeah, we're, we're eating the wall. We stayed in the W Hotel in Piccadilly, um, paying, I don't know, 800 euros a night. And then we were from Monday to Friday. I think on Tuesday, we were coming back. Like we spent 48, 48 hours in London all the offices were closed. Uh, the investors did not want to talk to us. Um, it was like, no, no, you came from Spain, you're the virus. So we came back uh, with 80 people in the office, like, okay, we have no money. COVID exploded. Uh, small companies are going to shut down. So it was a little bit scary. Um, a few weeks later, the business was steady. Um, we kept getting more users and it looked like the COVID was not killing the small companies. Actually, uh, a lot of people went remote. A lot of people started their own company, kind of like they use this, you know, as you were saying, right, that you started your company like two years ago, the fintechs. Um, so I think a lot of people saw the COVID, the staying at home as an opportunity to uh, forget their uh, full day office time. Um, so actually, hold it. We start growing even more than before. So um, a few months later, we end up raising uh, the money. And then a few months later, we end up uh, raising 15 more million. Uh, just to to keep building to keep building the story. Um, basically, uh, after that, then hiring became uh, a big issue. You know, the world became uh, global. Um, I didn't have to hire somebody living in Barcelona, twenty minutes from the office, right? I could hire somebody with a super nice talent from India, and then the same could happen to us, right? Like um, any U.S. company paying two hundred k for an average engineer in the U.S. could hire one of my guys. That I would pay like you know an average of like 50k in Barcelona, and then how do you compete with that, right? Because at the end, companies are not you know we we cannot grow at the same speed as a US company if they have traction in that market. But if you can be remote, then you know everybody can hire you and you can be working for every company. So I think that's one of the reasons of the success of the of, the, of people just working everywhere, right? You don't have to work uh, for a company in your city. Um, if you live in in, in London. 
I don't understand, right? Like you could be working for a London company and just living in the San Barcelona or riding in Andorra or kind of like anywhere in the world. So um, fast forward, um, a few months later, uh, we received an offer from a Norwegian company and we sold the company in 2021 um, to a Norwegian group that basically their mission, it's called Bisma. Um, it's a gigantic company. They buy a lot of companies and they can like do like an aggregate p &L, So it's like a constellation company um, with a 800 million EBITDA. So it's a super successful company business. And yeah, we sold it like a year and a half ago. I'm still there. And as long as hold it is my plan A, I'm going to stick around. And that's my quick presentation on how we built and exited hold it in less than five years. Bernat, a curiosity. How do you learn programming? Just uh, auto learning or? Uh, yeah, I think like my parents, like I wanted my parents to get a house in the center of a village. I am from San Pedro, um, Pep Guardiola village. Um, you know, it was a 7,000 people village that nobody could put in a map till Pep Guardiola became famous. Now um, Bernat is my old, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, different scale, different scale. Um, so my parents got a house like, you know, far away from the center. So I could not go to play with my friends. I could not go to play football. So um, coding, uh, being with a computer was my friend. So it was a, a early gig. And maybe it was tough times when I was young, uh, but it was fun. Okay, okay. Do you want that, that, that do, we can show the people the, the, the final project? How is how it's working right now? So I'm going to share the screen. Yeah, I think more to Holder. Like right now, uh, Holder is a is a smart business uh, management software for SMEs, basically. And here is a, a little bit of selling about the company. Uh, but we are an invoicing tool that does a lot more than invoicing. You can uh, pay, you can receive money, and basically you can stay wherever you want and have invite your accountant to work. <clears throat> Um, in your account. So basically, you don't have to go and send invoices, collect. We have OCR. You can uh, auto scan every receipt. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's like online collaboration between the company and the accountant. We also have like a like an accountant's marketplace that we're putting a lot of work to. So basically, even if you don't know an accountant and you know you move to a country where you don't know, uh, you can still find your accountant through the marketplace and just um, you know there's a chat. Um, so basically, you can run all your company within business uh, within Holdet. And then basically from again from the invoicing, connecting to your banks, getting paid, paying the account, the, the yeah. accounting. Now yeah, good one. I forgot about that. Um, so COVID exploded, and actually, uh, okay, funny story here. We had uh, so it was like a like a full square office. We had half of it, and we were paying around like around twenty five k for 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 the office. It was like around eight hundred meters in Barcelona. We're paying twenty six k a month. Two months before COVID exploded, um, we said, hey, we need more space. Why don't we get the other half? So we end up paying 46K a month. Um, then boom, COVID exploded. So we were paying double, like we're paying like around 50K with taxes and everything. And then COVID exploded and we had to send everybody home, right? It was mandatory. So we had a 50K office empty uh, for a few months. Uh, well, more, more than a few months. Uh, so we use it to do, you know, refactor it and just, you know, make it look a little bit nicer. And then when we were allowed to force people back, it was scary. Why? Because, you know, again, we were in a global market. We, were, we had to compete with the U.S. companies or like with other companies. Um, so we kept the flexible policy, I think, not because we were super strong or we, because we had like a super big vision. It's because we were scared, right? Like, you know, remote was actually working, uh, even if we weren't fans of it. Uh, so it worked. So we let it be. And right now, how we evolved is like I think like a lot of companies, um, you know, a lot, a few were more strict than others. Uh, we're doing a hybrid model where uh, basically we have either you could be full remote, you know, and then you know maybe like if you've been uh, with us for a year or you were, you apply to a full remote position because you have the seniority, uh, you know, you can do you can be whatever. We have people living in Canary Islands, um, people living uh, I think like even outside Europe. Or if you like the normal framework is uh, you have to be in the office at least one day from Monday till Thursday and every team can have uh, different rules. Like for example, customer success and sales, they have to be two days from Monday till Thursday. And that, that's uh, that's a win-win. Why? Because three years later, we didn't have to get more office. So we're not paying 100K. We're still paying the 50K uh, with a little bit of inflation because of the inflation. Um, and so basically we have the same office, but we can still have a lot more people uh, because we don't have to. And actually there's 
if everybody had to, like we're right now, I think we're around 170 people. So if I had to put everybody in the office in the same day, I could not. So I think uh, remote is saving me, uh, you know, saving, hold it a lot of money in infrastructure. You're muted. Uh, thank you very much, Bernard. It's, it's been very interesting. Uh, as, as the time is limited, and I know that you are a very busy man, uh, you have, I, I think that you participated in the Mobile World Congress, and uh, you are involved in, in many things, so uh, we, we can release you uh, from, from this uh, webinar about the uh, Andorra digital, uh, digital Nomads. So <laughs> if you are interested far, uh, later on, I will send you the video. Before before he leaves, Bernard, do you know David Garzón? Uh, he sounds familiar. He, he, he used to work with me in Grupo Intercom, and he's also, well, uh, I think, a very geek guy, very nice guy. He has a sister also working in yeah, internet companies. Uh, I, I understand that San Pedro is a small small place. Maybe maybe it's it's, it's bigger than, than, than what I guess. <laughs> No, it's 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 seven it's seven thousand people. Um, the problem of being that small is that we all live super quickly. Yeah. Uh, so I think somebody else said this name. So I think the name sounds familiar, but we don't we don't know each okay. other. Okay. Okay. Um, at least that I know of. Um, yes. you know, I think so it's it's a, it's a town smaller than Andorra, which is not very common. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are many 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 towns in Spain that are bigger than Andorra, as a, as a whole country. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Bernard and uh, all all the luck for the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the invite. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. So, Nicolas, as as it's impossible to to get you know subtitles, so we are going to continue in English. So, uh, Nicolas uh, is a very uh, polyphasetic uh, guy. Is my brother, so I, I, uh, he studied law. He's a lawyer. He's also a journalist. And finally, he did an MBA. And finally, he turned he he turned to the digital world, where he has been working all his life, as from the beginning. At the beginning, for the Grupo Intercom. Later on, for uh, companies, startups, and finally, a very successful startup that was. Uh, Number one in Europe, I think, uh, cosasdebarcos.com. Then later was uh, you. You were bought several times, no? Yeah, Nicolas, uh, I give you a word. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Jose Maria, and uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I will try to summarize uh, my experience on the on the tech digital um, a world and try to connect. This experience with uh, with the digital nomad, I think, topic that uh, probably is the, ba the basis no, of this webinar. Um, as uh, Jose Maria uh, was saying, um, well, I prepared myself first. Uh, I studied law, then art journalism, and then an MBA. When I finished the MBA, I didn't really, well, I have clear that I didn't want to work for a big corporation. So I decided to start in a, a Spanish uh, digital incubator called Grupo Intercom uh, and started in a business called Solo Stocks. I was there for five years learning the, 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 the business and so on. And then uh, I moved to uh, building a business called Cosas de Barcos. Uh, it is a digital marketplace for recreational uh, boating sector. Um, so when I when I when I started, I was not the founder, but I was a partner of this business and the CEO. Um, uh, when I started, there were four people in five six years. Uh, when 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 we sold the business, we were thirty with a uh, well uh, good revenue and and I think it was a healthy business, as you know. In the digital world, uh, the multipliers when you sell a company, uh, I think they are pretty healthy. So we managed to sell uh, this business to a bigger group, uh, the, lead, the market leader on this on, on our sector called a uh, Poach Group. Um, and then I was there for another five years. The company sold, but was sold to a private equity. 
another five years with the private equity. And then finally, the company was sold uh, or uh, uh, a lot of zeros uh, for another private equity, probably, you know, Premira. First, the first one was Apex Partners. Um, the thing, and, and I, I will relate, relate all this experience with uh, the digital nomad topic. Uh, in, in our business, since I started, we were using the uh, remote type of uh, working. So especially the tech uh, profiles, uh, we gave them uh, freedom to work from wherever they want. Uh, they, they had to come to the office uh, for the meetings, maybe Monday and Friday, but they were working remotely. So for us, when, when COVID arises, arised, it was not a, a big issue, the, the thing of working remotely. What I've learned from, from, from my professional experience is that if you manage your business well and, and you manage your resources well, I think you can be as efficient and, and, and you can work at the same type of uh, level uh, working in an office or working uh, outside an office. Uh, 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 and I, and I, I will explain you my, my current uh, um, dedication today. I'm, I'm trying to build another business uh, with some other uh, former colleagues uh, from, from, the old, from the old one. Uh, and I'm working with people in the UK, with people in India, developers in India, developers in Argentina, uh, we are all connected through this type of meetings, uh, and, and uh, I think the type of this type of company allows you to to work completely remotely. I'm working from home, uh, and and again, if you manage things uh, well in a proper way and you manage your business with with data, you follow the data and so on. Uh, I think it's a a uh, really efficient way to work. Uh, so yeah, I think this this gives you also motivation to people because you can you can place yourself wherever you want. As Bernard was saying, he loved uh, snowboarding. So in this type of environment, I think you can also manage your life uh, lifestyle better. Uh, and I think that's all. I don't know if you have any questions. I hope it was not so too boring. <laughs> Uh, and I hope, uh, Jose Maria, this is what you were expected, expecting me to. Yeah, 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 of course. That you explained the experience that uh, you never uh, went back to the office. So oh. at that moment, you started uh, being a digital nomad, I think. Well, but, but yes, but uh, <laughs> they know they have to know that uh, the the authorizations are limited, but it doesn't mean that they cannot come to Andorra if they want and uh, work here because. In any case, they can apply for an active residence permit and uh, they can decide to, okay, uh, there is no more authorizations for digital nomad visa, okay, but I can uh, incorporate my own company and uh, carry out my professional activity throughout this company uh, here in Andorra. The, the only difference is that uh, the digital nomad visa uh, doesn't require to pay any amount to the Andorran Financial Authority, so uh, they don't have to pay this 50,000 euros to the to, to the Andorra Financial Authority. This but term is the warranty, it's a warranty, it's a warranty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, by means of the active residence, they have to, to pay it. But there are uh, solutions uh, for people that come that wants to come to, to Andorra. In fact, we have uh, clients that are digital nomads and uh, they have come here with the active uh, residence permit because until this moment, uh, the digital nomad visa doesn't exist. So uh, in any case, if they cannot enter into the first uh, 50 or 100 uh, applicants to the digital nomad visa, there are, there are other ways to come to, to Andorra and carry out uh, your professional activity. Marty, and, and I had an, an idea that uh, we need to check with the government if it's possible. I think it should be possible. That is, uh, okay, if I wait, because right now the politicians are in elections. So uh, basically, the government right now is in function, is, is an interim government. So uh, probably they will not do anything until the end of the elections. So uh, if somebody wants to get the residency and wants to get the tax residency, if uh, the approval is after the June the 30th, we, uh, he uh, would not be taxed in Andorra. So if, if he wants to advance, he could apply for the active residence 
And then later on, you know, transform that visa in a digital nomad if the Ministry of Trade Economy approves it. Yes, and the most important thing is that when you apply for, so when you obtain the digital, digital nomad visa and you uh, reject the previous uh, active residence, you will recover the 50,000 euros that you have paid as a warranty. Exactly, the ramp, exactly. The, the ramp, so this is an important thing to, very, very to important consider. To develop, you know, yes, yes, the uh, details and uh, all kind of, uh, of small things and, and details to to uh, be able to uh, file the application or submit the application to the administrative authorities. So basically, the uh, great advantages are based on internet speed, which is uh, Andorra is the top one country in the world in, in terms of internet speed. The taxes are very low. I would say that one of the countries with the lower uh, taxes uh, that is fully compliant with the requirements uh, of the OECD. Safety is top 10, nature, sport and quality of life. So we will see here, you know, a comparison uh, which is uh, made through the web page of a nomad list that I would recommend uh, to uh, all the audience that could be interested in, uh, in this uh, digital nomad visa to take a look to that because it's, it's, it's like a, another para a parallel world, you know, like in a virtual reality because they have their own, uh, their own world, you know, their own chat and many things that they, when, when I realized that, you know, it was very funny. So here we can see clearly that in Internet speed Andorra is the number one. Here in the cost of living is in the middle, but, uh, you know, this web page at least says that uh, you need to live in Andorra 5,500 euro, which is not true. And here we have Andorra as the seventh uh, safety country in the world. And here, you know, are pros and cons. And as I said, you know, I don't agree with uh, that Andorra is very, very expensive in comparison to other alternatives. Finally, here is a summary. So if, if you go to the web page of the normal list, you can find, you know, all kind of filters. So the web is, is magnific. Uh, when I took a look to that, uh, I, I was very surprised because uh, that so sophisticated tool, you know, for digital nomad was was in the web. So, and finally, here is the summary. So, uh, that, that the current requirements that we know basically is uh, requires a presence of 90 days. The visa is limited to uh, 100 per year, or what is the same. 50 uh, for uh, digital nomads and the other 50 for digital entrepreneurs. We don't know the difference. So uh, it requires the presence of 90 days. Uh, and the main advantage is that you are uh, exempted from the warranty of 50,000, which is required for active residences. As uh, nowadays, you know, the, the, uh, the Andorra is in process of elections. We don't expect to be to have you know a regulation approved uh, very very soon, but uh, hopefully at the end of this semester we will have this visa fully operational, so uh, uh, all the people interested could apply. If you have any doubt of question, uh, we would remain at your entire disposal. Thank you.